time scoring runs. 15 so, times this year the Braves have been held to two runs or fewer. So manager Freddie Gonzalez and let's check out Rick Renteria's Cubs. Southwest starting lineup against the right hander Julio Tehran. It'll be Emilio Bonifacio in the leadoff spot. Ryan Kalish in left batting second. Anthony Rizzo plays first and hits third. Starlin Castro's at short. Nate Sherholtz in right. Luis Valbuena gets to start at second. Mike Holt leading National League rookies in homers and RBIs. John Baker, as he normally does, catches for Jason Hamill. Braves defense brought to you by Kia. Strong up the middle. BJ Upton, very good out there in center. Jason Hayward, gold glove caliber right fielder. Justin Upton, brother of BJ's in left. And uh, Anderson Simmons highlights that infield. Boy, he is a wizard with the glove. Freddie Freeman rock solid over there at first as well. Behind the plate is Evan Gaddis. And on the mound, our Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher for Atlanta tonight is Julio Tehran, just 23 years of age. Seven starts, all quality work. He's two and two with a ERA of 1.80. That's good for fourth best in the National League. Outstanding numbers all across the board for the young right hander. Four pitch mix, fastball, slider, curve, and change. Braves with uh, a lot of injuries in terms of their starting rotation, and that started in spring training. Brandon Beachy, Chris Medlin. Tommy John surgery in March. Tehran was their opening day starter as a result. I finished fifth last year in the National League Rookie of the Year voting. 14 wins, eight losses, a 320 ERA last season. And he's been good every time. Last time out, he gave up three runs to the Giants, all solo home runs and a three to one loss. He has yet to lose back to back decisions in his major league career. 44 games, 41 starts for Tehran. Cubs got swept here last year. That was in early April on their first road trip. And then the Braves clinched the uh, National League East at Wrigley Field in late September. So here we go, Tehran against the switch hitting Emilio Bonifacio. And outside for ball one. Tehran does not have an overpowering fastball. He's got a really good slider, an outstanding changeup. Then Rizzo here in the first. Pretty good look from center field that camera. Pretty much centered up with the mounted home plate, fouled off two and two. So we can second guess the umpire freely tonight without having to worry about the angle. working a full count to start the night. Rare night off for him last night. And then a little bit of a tailspin lately. And here it comes. And a swing and a miss on a fastball. Caught a lot of the plate. Yeah, 
got to set up over the inside corner. Tehran hits his spot, and that's probably his best asset. I talked about the, the quality of his off speed, his secondary pitches, but fastball command, too. It gets pretty good run on his two seamer on, on the arm side. And he's not afraid to go inside. Second in the league last year and hit batsman. Get me over curve on Ryan Kalish. Rain delay of 18 minutes. The pitch. Ooh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ball one. Well, let's take a look at our Menards pitch tracks. Should have been a strike. Break for Kalish. That's where a lot of pitchers would like to live mm -hmm. in the strike zone, right yeah. at the bottom. Braves were off yesterday. Lost two of three to the. St. Louis Cardinals earlier this week. Brave fans would argue that the Braves have been off for the last 10 days or so. Right. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> we could have early tension between the pitcher and the umpire. So That's far, it's a uh, yeah. better pitch. Yeah, it might be. It, might, it, could, it could be 0 and 4 instead of 2 and 2. Tap foul. So if this trend continues, it should be a good night for the hitters. Although Hamill and Tehran have both proven to be very effective. Regardless of the situation so far this year, nary a non quality start between the two. Well, that's a big word to use after a lack of sleep. I'm impressed. Mary? Yeah. And perfectly placed, I might add. Low, it's full, three and two. Bonifacio ran the count full before striking out, so the Cub hitters here early getting a good look at Tehran so they can build a little bit of a scouting report over there in the visiting dugout. Temperatures uh, in the mid 60s cooled off by the rain late this afternoon into the early evening hours. Wow. <laughs> so Kalish takes the walk with Tehran staring into his dugout. And you can understand why. That one's borderline. <laughs> Put a lot of quality pitches in that sequence, but Kalish able to work the one out walk. Now, Anthony Rizzo. Three hits last night against the White Sox, including a double. And a home run, and the pitch is inside, but he went after it. Ball made by Mike Muchlinski down at first, one strike. Yeah, I'm not sure he went, but maybe Muchlinski's thinking somebody's got to call strikes here tonight. See, I'm not tired. I haven't lost a thing. Evan Gaddis, the catcher, taking over for Brian McCann, who was a stalwart here for a long time. He's moved on to New York. Gaddis played a lot of outfield last year. Big, strong kid. So far this year, he's thrown out 11 of 15 trying to steal. Just a hair below league average.
Two strikes on Rizzo. Kalish takes off. Here's the throw to second. Out. Well, it looked like he was going to beat that throw. But uh, maybe a little bit of a muddy track and a slow slide. Didn't appear to be a pitch out. It looked like a, just a pitch up. Gaddis didn't come out from behind home plate. He came out of his crouch on the high fastball. Good throw. Kalish was wondering maybe uh, Ricky should come out, but on the replays we looked at, it looked like they probably got him. It was close. It would have been tough to overturn. Sets up a 1 2 and a swing and a miss. To end the Cubs first, two Ks for Tehran in the opening frame. event now. On one hit. Now their Southwest starting lineup. Hayward, Justin Upton, and Freddie Freeman at the top. Evan Gaddis, a cleanup man, is a catcher. Chris Johnson's at third. He recently signed a contract extension. B.J. Upton off to another slow start. Their shortstop Simmons very rarely swings and misses. He hits seven. Yeah, pitcher bats eighth in this lineup, or at least this week he does, with Pena the second baseman batting ninth. Key of defense for the Cubs this evening. Kalish, Bonifacio, Sheerholz, left center, right. Old Castro, Balbuena, third to first. John Baker in there behind the plate, as he normally is with Jason Hamill on the mound, and he is our Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher. And solid numbers for Jason Hamill. Uh, he has not been very good against Atlanta in his career. One and three with a 639 against the Braves. But as Len mentioned, the last time he faced him, the 33rd one hitter in Baltimore Oriole history. Here at Turner Field. I wonder who got the hit. Do you know? No, but I'm going to find out. Well, it might have been Hayward because he's six for eight against oh. Hamill, and he takes a strike. This is information that we must know and we must know soon. So we're going to go to the Google machine and find that it was Jason Hayward. You are correct, sir. You see Hayward protecting that uh, jaw that was fractured last year. Emma works quickly. Ball hit high in the air out of the shallow right center. It's Nate Sherholtz to make the catch. Off the bat, I thought he got it a little bit better than he did, but just a little pop up off the bat of Hayward. With a number of struggling brave hitters. This guy, Justin Upton, had a pretty good month of April as he did last year. So overall, the numbers. Very good. Tied for second with nine home runs and a 378 on base average. 
Seven of those nine homers have been in this ballpark. And ball one low. And the uh, Cubs were swept last year here in this ballpark. Second series of the season. And Upton hit a game winning home run off Carlos Marmel in the ninth inning. Two batters after his brother BJ tied the game with a home run. Swing and a miss, two and one. Run swing, but Hamill threw it right by him. Three and one with Freddie Freeman on deck. <laughs> Troy Tulowitzki, six oh eight at Coors Field. Can't hit 600 all year, can he at home? Well, theoretically he can't, but no, he won't. Tulowitzki is leading the majors in average on base percentage, slugging OPS. Hamill liked her on, works quickly, throws a lot of strikes. Last time out, he went six innings, allowed seven hits, three runs. And that was his worst outing of the year. A quality start. Got a no decision. The Cubs ultimately lost that ball game to the Cardinals five to four. Three two is hit in the air to right. Sure holds again. Makes the play. Two outs, it's a first baseman, Freddie Freeman. The Braves have handed out a lot of contract extensions here lately. You hear the, the term cost certainty? The Braves may have more of that than anybody else in baseball. He got an eight year deal worth $135 million through 2021. You mentioned Chris Johnson. Recently added three years to his deal. Simmons got seven years in February. He signed through 2020. Well, they just reworked their TV deal. And flush with cash. They're building a new ballpark. I haven't broken ground yet, but I believe 2017. Yeah, gonna move in. That's the plan up north. Tehran got a six year extension in February. Craig Kimbrell, four years, 42 million. The pitch fouled back. So expectations are, are very high here. And they got off to a great start. But they have been really struggling here the last uh, week and a half. Freeman held its full. The pitching was so good early on, they were able to, you know, win their fair share despite the fact that they were struggling a little bit offensively. And, and of course, of late, they've really been struggling, and the pitching has come down to earth a little bit. Uh, the, the, it's just the makeup of that of their lineup is going to run hot and cold. I mean, that's the nature of baseball. But really, with a team like the Braves, uh, it's going to be you know, a little bit more of a Big swing from you know a team that hits a lot of home runs but strikes out a lot. They don't draw walks. Don't hit for a high average. Uh, Hamill getting squeezed a little bit too. 
think every defender had taken a, a stutter step toward the dugout. It didn't have to be, but certainly could have had a good quality pitch to a dangerous hitter. That's one, no matter what the call is, somebody's going to be barking at you. Well, and the other part is he made his pitch, whether he walked him or not. That's where he wanted to throw it. Sandlot slugger now yeah. batting. Evan Gaddis will always take a big hack at it. Yeah, he fits the profile. He's only walked three times this year. He's fun to watch play, though. He's so old school. Just rip it and rip it. Knuckling and it's down in front of Kalish. Two out rally by the Braves here in the first inning. He's a top spinner. Apparently he likes the ball up. The thing with letter high. Bring up the third baseman, Chris Johnson, the career high 321 last year. Trailed only Michael Kadire in the National League. You see, well off that mark so far this year. Only hitting 169 at home. Quite Julio Franco with this uh, batting stance, but kind of similar, I guess. Ball got part of the bat. He's got a bit of a long swing, and uh, he's at his best when he's shooting the ball the other way. So he doesn't hit a lot of home runs. I think he had 12 last year. More of a line drive type hitter. Those strike out a fair bit. Ground ball toward the hole, backhanded, and a slip by Castro. He's just going to eat it. After eating it, I guess. So an infield hit for Johnson. Gets him to roll over and hit this ground ball on the shortstop side. If Castro is able to stay on his feet, he might have a shot at Johnson. It does not run particularly well. Well, a lot of rain early on. Slick field, down he goes, and bases loaded opportunity for BJ Upton. See, well, wearing glasses, uh, it's a recent addition, and he has admitted that it has improved his vision. Had a real tough time of it here with the Braves since signing a big five year free agent deal last year. Worth over. Seventy five million dollars. Was the largest ever free agent contract handed out. By the Braves. Just 184 last year. Jerry AT and T U versus Multiview. All this happening with two outs, a walk, and then back-to-back -back singles. Slider misses low. And the pitch. 
pitch. Found it off his foot. for Hamill. His 26th offering. Swing and a miss. He got him on a high fastball to end the inning. Braves leave him loaded. Scoreless after one. night started 18 minutes late due to rain comes we'll have Castro Sherholtz and Valbuena new against Julio Tehran two run homer for Starlin last night his fifth of the year Ball one. By the way, Troy Tulowitzki is homered tonight. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, he's not the only one in that lineup, Rock. He's a, scoring a lot of runs. Trail two to one at Cincinnati in the fifth inning. Nolan Arenado is 0 for two. Rockies seven games above 500 in second place in the NL West, a game behind the San Francisco Giants. Bounce to Johnson at third. Get your tickets to the party of the century during the next homestand. The Cubs will celebrate with music, food, and fun giveaways reminiscent of the 1930s. For more information about the 30s celebration, visit WrigleyField100.com. The Brewers and Yankees are in. It's a five-game homestand, three with the Brewers, two with the Yankees. Get your tickets today at Cubs.com. So here's Sherholtz after one of his... Better games of the early season last night. Got on four different times. Single, triple, two walks. Scored twice. Backdoor breaker. This is wide. Off the interstate. Batting 200 now. First multi-hit game for him in quite some time. And maybe that'll be a springboard. Good 
good fastball one and one. You would prefer if you're. Looking for that springboard that you face someone other than Tehran who's yielding a 196 batting average but. It is what it is it's the big leagues you run into a lot of really good pitching. 6 2 right hander. High for a ball two and one Tehran's from Columbia. Spent a couple of years atop the Braves top prospect list and came to fruition last year with that solid rookie season. Braves plugging some holes in that rotation because of the injuries. Aaron Harang was really, really good. Through his first, what, three or four starts. Then he had a really rough one and gave up nine or ten to somebody. Irvin Santana, who we'll see. Tomorrow, I believe it is, has been a really nice addition for them. Yeah, Santana and Samarja tomorrow. And Harang will go on Sunday. will replace left hander Alex Wood, who for the time being goes into the bullpen. It's kind of, kind of ironic because the story surrounding the Atlanta Braves in spring training was oh no, all these injuries is going to decimate that pitching staff. But the narrative has changed. Now it's all about their inability to score runs. And the fact that they have too many starters. They've got Mike Miner, Gavin Floyd. And Sherholtz strikes out swinging. Time now for you to tweet your photo using hashtag. Cubs fan photo or Northside fan photo for a chance to have it shown later on in our broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Three strikeouts early. For Tehran. One ball, no strike count to Valbuena. Could not find the right sign, so we'll start over. Now Tehran picks one. High in the air to center. BJ Upton with the catch. And out number three. Inning and a half of the books. Nothing, nothing.
Andrelton Simmons, the Braves fine fielding shortstop. Will lead off their second inning. Right ahead of the pitcher who's been batting eighth now all week as Freddie Gonzalez just tries to mix it up. Switch hitting second baseman Ramiro Pena is in the nine spot. We've seen of Simmons, and it's not a lot. The series here, the series at Wrigley Field. Uh, he's been impressive, but when you talk to people who watch him every day, they say he is the best defensive player in the game at any position. And the advanced numbers backed it up last year. Defensive runs saved, he was off the charts. As you play for Bonifacio. Primarily right handed hitting lineup for the Braves tonight, and right handed hitters coming into this game batting just 128 against Jason Hamill. He's been able to neutralize them with the fastball slider combination. Tehran not bad. 190 in his short career. That quickly comes Hamill. Tehran stays alive. David O'Brien, who has been covering the Braves for a while for the Atlanta Journal Constitution, pointing out that that one hit shutout that Hamill dealt against the Braves back on June 16th of 2012, as Jason will pick that one up and throw to first for out number two. That was kind of a, a benchmark uh, moment for the Braves, and not in a good way. It was not because Hamill one hit them. It was because Brandon Beachy had to exit that performance with elbow issues. Since then, he's had two Tommy John surgeries. I mentioned Medlin. Done for the year as well. Mike Miner, shoulder problems started on the DL. Outside corner on the switch hitting Pena. He knocked in four over two games early last year against the Cubs. Dan Uglis struggling. Mm -hmm. He struggled all year last year as well and starting to lose playing time now. Pena switch hitter hitting just a buck 92 from this side of the plate. Braves won the division last year, won 96 ball games before losing to the Dodgers in the divisional series. The first division title since 2005. And a 1 2 3 second for Hamill. Nothing, nothing from Atlanta.
analysis. Follow the action with Cubs in game live on CSNChicago.com. Brought to you by Comcast Business Class. Third inning, and the Cubs will have seven, eight, and nine against Tehran. Starting with Mike Alt, first career grand slam last night, and has you know, homered in each of his last two games. Facing National League rookies and homers and RBIs. Hitters count 2 and 0. I'm not sure, but both feet might have been off the ground on the home run he hit last night. The grand slam. He does not get cheated. Tempted to turn him loose right here. And he takes a strike. High and deep. Toward the wall and it's gone. He's homered in three straight, and the Cubs lead one nothing. All right, big fellas getting on a roll. Sometimes you hit it that high, you're not quite sure, but he he got enough of it. That ball carries pretty well here, but it is a big ballpark. This one just a little left of dead center field, so probably 390 plus on his high tower and fly ball. You got to be a strong man to hit it that far when you hit it that high. And he qualifies. So that's his seventh. He's a sturdy young man, and he can turn around a fastball. John Baker is caught. All of Jason Hamill starts, but one. one He's won the count. Seventh home run allowed by Julio Tehran this year, so a high, high percentage of his runs have come via a long ball, much like Jason Hamill. And usually, solo home runs don't beat you. It was three solo home runs allowed by Tehran in his last start, as I mentioned, it was his undoing. He got beat three to one. That was mostly the fact that his club couldn't score any runs. And you would take seven innings and three runs and feel pretty good about your chances most nights. Just two hits, 25 tries for Baker in limited time. Got a good plus minus though because he's been catching Jason Hamill. Yeah. Outside two and two. Started the year with a long offer and he had hit into some tough luck. Hit a few balls hard, just couldn't find any open spaces out there. That's just the way it is with a backup catcher. Tough to get any rhythm at the plate. Field Hayward on the warning track. Every Sunday is Kids Sunday at Wrigley Field on Sunday, May 18th. 
Cubs play the Brewers. Start time is 120. First 5,000 kids, 13 and under, will receive a Cubs Viewmaster. This is the third of 10 Cubs retro toy giveaways. After the ball game, the first 1,000 kids, 13 and younger, will have the opportunity to run the bases. For more information or to purchase tickets, we suggest Cubs.com. Sunday night against the Cardinals, a walk and a two run single. Or Hamill. Cubs leading on Mike Alt home run to start this inning. Winners, the home plate umpire, has been consistent in not giving that pitch down around the knees. Popped him up on the infield. Freddie Freeman has it, two outs. We'll go back to the top and Bonifacio struck out 3 2 pitch in the first inning. Well, his former team has stayed hot. The Marlins starting an 11 game road trip last night beat the Padres. They'll have Jose Fernandez on the mound uh, later tonight against Tyson Ross. They have momentum with him on the mound. They also have a half game lead in the National League East over the that. Nationals starting play tonight. The resurgent fish. Good young pitching there in, in Miami, but the offense has been surprising. Some interleague action this weekend. Yankees are in Milwaukee. Scoreless in the second. Good matchup Tanaka and Gallardo. Um, Ryan Braun's not back yet, is he? Ryan Braun is not in their lineup. Oh my! That's interesting. Call third on the outside corner, but Mike Alt leading off the inning. The towering home run and the Cubs lead one to nothing.
Cardinals. Tune in and see if Travis Wood can bounce back from his south side out in Cubs Cardinals. Monday at 6.30 for the pregame here on Comcast Sportsnet. Hamill with a 1-0 lead. 0-1 count on Jason Hayward. Make it 0-2. An All-Star in 2010 as a rookie. Gold Glover in 2012. What a debut against the Cubs. First career trip to the plate. Three run homer off. Former Cub Carlos Zambrano. From the area. Donna Georgia. First have always pick. done well recruiting mm -hmm. drafting players from. The state of Georgia haven't they. Chased a bad one. Hamill broke out the change up there to finish off Hayward. Yeah, well, the story was that they kind of hid him, uh, Hayward prior to the draft. He was still good at, as an amateur in high school. He walked all the time. It's a lot of scouts that didn't have a very good feel for him. But the, the Braves were on him. They watched him. They there some park up north, way up north, and up in the trees somewhere where he was playing, and they scouted him. And, Frank Wren, general manager. Still just 24 years of age. Hey, we're a great oh, outfit. You said Frank Wren's 24. No, oh. he's a well preserved 24. I don't know how old Frank is. Hey, we're, though, he's, he's a bit of an enigma. You know, up by this point in his career, he had really, would have really taken off. Been trying to bring rain again, way up in the air. Caught by Bonifacio. Must have done a crossword today. Mary and Enigma here. First three innings. Had a cup of coffee a little while ago. Another big stick, Freddie Freeman. Finishing the top five in the MVP balloting last year. 319 with. 23 home runs. Have a little bit of a hot gun here tonight. That looked like a changeup. It recorded 87. Freeman, very good hands. Quick bat, a line drive hitter. And certainly with power. Two two on the way and just kind of softly lined over the head of Castro. Uh, he does what we talk so much about with two strikes the willingness to change his approach. Just try to be real short and quick to the ball and that was a great example of it there. Just doesn't have a whole lot going on with his legs there wide open stance or a very wide stance I should say not an open stance but. Feet spread wide apart. Flick of the wrist and a line drive single. All one on Gaddis. He just kind of has that look 
of the guy who just kind of rolls out of bed, throws his uniform on, and mm -hmm. jumps into the batter's yeah. box, mm -hmm. ready to hit. Yep. No batting gloves. So what you'd imagine that if cavemen played baseball, this is what it would look like. He's got his club. <laughs> Rub some dirt on it. Yeah. Freeman runs and there's a the ball lined in the left. Freeman will keep on moving to third. And again, a two out rally. He did this in the first inning. And remember where the pitch was last time Gaddis jumped on it was up high. And again, here, trying to go away and it sails back in. But that you don't see this pitch lined very often. Pitch that high is usually swung through or popped up. An awfully quick bat and some top hand that worked there to get on top of that and hit it that hard. Ronis about his game it reminds me a little bit of Hunter Pence. Yeah, good call. A little bigger than Hunter. Mm -hmm. Let's go back and uh, watch the Mickey Rourke movie, The Wrestler. I swear Gaddis took him on in one of those matches. This kind of looks like a guy who'd be a professional wrestler in a high school gym somewhere as he'll take second on a wild pitch. Well, these are the situations where the, the Braves have really struggled of late. I mean, they've had all kinds of offensive problems, but the runners in scoring position, they haven't been able to do much. A big opportunity for Johnson. John Baker tries to keep that breaking ball in front, enough so that Freeman can't score, but Gaddis. Gets himself into scoring position. It'll be a wild pitch. Moment here early in the game, worthy of a conversation. Johnson with the base open to be followed by BJ Upton, two guys who swing and miss a lot. So you don't have to throw many pitches in the strike zone here to get out of this jam. Slider for a strike. One and one. Along with a perfectly placed slider on the outside corner. One run in. Here comes Gaddis. And he scores. Chris Johnson knocks in two. And the Braves lead two to one. Second base hit for Chris Johnson tonight. First time he tried to squirt one through the hole. Castro was able to field that one, but didn't have a play this time. Hit much more sharply. A little bit surprised at how aggressive they were with that fastball to Chris Johnson in that situation. Maybe that's not where Jason wanted to throw that ball, but we got a good chunk of home plate. The Braves have the lead. Three straight two out hits. Swing and a miss. One of the things Jason Hamill has done this year. When you look at the numbers, he's been really good with men on base. Coming into play tonight, hitters were hitting just 118 against him with runners on. At the end of the bat, pretty well hit, but it's going to stay in. Bonifacio with the catch. 
And the inning is over. It's two to one Atlanta on the Johnson single. Braves two, Cubs one. Join the Anthony Rizzo Family Foundation on Friday, May 16th, after the ball game at Ravel downtown for the second annual cook-off for cancer presented by Call One. Celebrity chefs will cook off, air quotes, self-inspired ballpark fare served by Cubs players. Guests will vote for their favorite chefs and dishes by tipping their Cubs server. Ultimately, all tips and event proceeds will benefit pediatric cancer research, care, and support. Cause close to home for Anthony Rizzo and his family. To purchase tickets, please visit cubs.com slash cook. Second annual. Big success last year. Great cause. Come on out. We'll see Rizzo right after Kalish. Walked in the first and was caught stealing. 2-1 Atlanta. Here in the fourth. Winter starting to open up that outside corner. He's, he's squeezed both Tehran and Hamill on pitches that were over the plate, but down around the knees. But now showing a little generosity off that outside edge. Struck out Bonifacio to, to end the top half of the third on a fastball that appeared to be out of the zone away. And here, both those first two called strikes to Kalish. Evan Gaddis, John Baker catching tonight. You recognize that. And try to exploit it. One two on the way. Round ball toward the middle. Pena throws out Kalish. Talking with Carlos Tosca, the bench coach for the Braves before the game today. He said they don't do as much shifting as a lot of other clubs. They do here. They've got uh, Pena, the second baseman, out in short right field, but they keep Simmons on the shortstop side at second. See a lot of clubs for Rizzo will have the shortstop swung over to the right side and they'll move the third baseman way off the bag. Carlos in charge of positioning the infielders. And he says Roger McDowell, the pitching coach, does a lot of work with the outfield positioning.
two and one on the foul. I thought it was interesting that the pitching coach would be, would be, would be doing that, but Carlos said, you know, Roger, you know, he knows the game so well and he knows his pitchers. And you know, much like a pitcher who's on the mound, sometimes you can almost visualize if I make my pitch, he's going to hit the ball here. And that's, you know, McDowell will move guys from pitch to pitch as he get, gets a sense of what his pitcher is doing or likely to do in any given count. Yeah, it all works together. Rizzo slices a high fly out toward Justin Upton. Two outs. And I think they'll defer to their veteran pitchers too, you know, a little bit. Let you know, let them say, hey, you know what? Uh, with this guy up, let's play him a step or two the other way. Or... See that with, you know, usually more with the veteran guys out there on the mound. Sometimes will even move their infielders, slide over a step or two. Sinker at the knees, strike one. Astro grounded to third to lead off the second inning. The pitch is now in an 0 2 spot. Swing and a miss on a high fastball. Number five already for Tehran. And then he works with a 2 1 lead in the fourth. Comcast Sportsnet. Arizona leading 2 0 in the fourth inning tonight at U.S. Cellular Field. Here it's 2 1 Braves. Hamill to Simmons. Curve for ball one. Year. Simmons hit 17 home runs, a tied for second all time for a shortstop in Braves history in a single season with Jeff Blauser, 1997. The ball to Valbuena who throws him out. Dennis Menke, the uh, franchise record, 20 with the 64 mm. Milwaukee Braves. Yeah, Dennis Menke, very good offensive shortstop.
As was Bowser. Did you say that was most or second most? Well, he tied with Blauser, 17. Menke and Menke has the record. 20. Yeah, 60, 1964. Off the end of the bat, little flare. Sherholtz, however, was playing a few steps in. Bring up Pena, played just 50 games last year before season ending shoulder surgery in June. Start a story with two outs, or at least ask a question with two outs, but I will anyway because I don't think it'll take long. Okay. What'd you do today? <laughs> <laughs> I slept. You got up. I went downtown to, to look for a job. No, I uh, slept. <laughs> I uh, had a little bite to eat and then went back to bed. Came to the ballpark. That was a, I lived like a ball player today, is what I did. Yeah, it was a late arrival or early, depending on your point of view. After a Late night on the south side last night. One, two. Did you do anything good today? Nope. Rest it up for tonight. Forecast looked bad, didn't it? The radar did. Mm -hmm. Knock on wood, we've been okay so far as Hamill strikes out Pena. Started a little late, but we played without interruption to this point. Two to one Atlanta. Again, the Cubs take on the Brewers. First 10,000 fans will receive a Babe Ruth called shot bobblehead. This is the third of 10 special Wrigley Field bobblehead giveaways. Make sure to attend every Friday to complete your set. Tickets are still available, including in the Budweiser bleachers. So visit Cubs.com. The party of the century continues. We're celebrating the 30s, and we got the Bambino calling a shot. Either that or he's trying to hail a cab outside the ballpark. Sherholtz will start it. Maybe he's ordering a libation.
Cubs run coming on a leadoff home run by Mike Olt in the third. Well, that's their only hit. Tehran walked Ryan Kalish in the first. He was caught trying to steal. Well, he's only faced one over the minimum to this point. Coming into this ball game, he had pitched 50 innings. He had pitched with a lead in only 12 of those 50 frames. And this season going very much like Jeff Samarja, where the run support has not been bountiful for him. He needs to throw that elevated fastball. That's what Gaddis called for, but Duran shook it off. He's come back around. I'm going to go fastball away here. One, two, swing and a miss. Change up. Dandy. Great pitch. Took a shot up with the fastball. And then a change up. A good arm action. Yeah, really sells it. Six punch outs. Five swinging. What makes a guy like Tehran so tough? You know, you see a soft tosser with a good changeup. As a hitter, you can tell yourself, well, that pitch is so good. I've got to. Respect that change up, stay back, try to hit the ball the other way, and still trust that I can be quick enough to get to his fastball. But Tehran's got enough fastball where that could be a, a tough proposition. You're thinking, you know, stay back so you can see that change up a little bit better, and he throws the heater in. You don't have much of a chance to do anything with that pitch. That's why he came into this game with a 196 batting average against a whip, walks plus hits per innings pitched of 0.88, fourth best in the league. That's why on paper you uh, have like a really good matchup with Tehran and Jason Hamill. Other guy has given up much in terms of base runners this year. Two two. Pop to left for Justin Upton. Here's our Xfinity high speed action replay. Michael in a hitter's count got a fastball about belly button high. And for the third straight day has gone deep. Sounds a little different when it comes off that bat. Mm. Didn't miss that one by much. Cardinals and Pirates. 3 3 as they play the fifth PNC. You look at Mike's numbers coming up through the Rangers organization, and try to project what he would be in the big leagues. You see a guy who might not hit for a high average, but would draw a fair bit of, fair amount of walks, would strike out a lot, and hit a lot of home runs. And I think that's the guy that ultimately we're going to see. I think as he. Continues to settle in here. You see that walk rate go up. Hopefully, can whittle away at the strikeout rate. 
but you know, again, that's you know, when you look at his minor league numbers, you knew he was going to strike out a fair bit up here. Two two mm. off the upper right arm of Gaddis. I, I noticed earlier that Gaddis generally does not put that uh, throwing arm or hand behind him like a lot of uh, Ooh, catchers do. He's, rest. He rests it right on that knee. Yeah, he, 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 I've seen him do both, and I think I think he forgets sometimes. Especially with nobody on base, might as well tuck it behind. Swing and a miss on a slider to end the inning. Seven punch outs now for Tehran. Two to one Braves on the Chris Johnson two out two run single in the third inning. Well, Jason Hamill. Third time through the order. Whip conversation we were having earlier, Hamill and Brown among the best. Right field again, Sherholtz retires Hayward for the second time. Jason is 0 for 3 tonight. Whip it good. Same guys on the list. Yeah. Here's, a, here's an interesting. Random Johnny Cueto statistical factoid. Let's have it. He has a left on base percentage of 100%. And the only runs he's allowed this year have been on home runs. He's allowed eight runs. He's given up six home runs. Every other base runner he's allowed is not coming around to score. Stranded, yeah. It's a 
good note. Basically, if you haven't taken them deep, you're not going to score against them. Sabermetrics would tell you he's in for some regression. It would be impossible to sustain that. So ERA is probably going to go up. Ultimately, we'll give up some of those base runners. League average in that stat is 72% or so. 3 and 0 on Justin Upton blockbuster deal January 24th 2013 Upton and Chris Johnson come here for four guys including Randall Delgado and Martin Prado swings and misses at the 3 0 Hamill challenged him Upton with a healthy cut but came up empty. Say the Braves have the upper hand in that deal to this point. Considering both guys they got in return have been productive everyday players. Here's Roger McDowell. You were talking about him earlier, their pitching coach, chatting with the manager Freddie Gonzalez. Balbuena makes a catch. Two outs. Whether the Cubs are home or on the road, guided tours of legendary Wrigley Field are available. Tours include visits to the press box, clubhouses, dugouts, as well as the chance to actually step on the field. This must see Chicago attraction. Houses 100 years of history for game days and non-game day schedules. Or to book your tour, visit Cubs.com slash tours today. Boy, Justin Upton ahead in the count 3 0 at three fastballs to hit. Hamill challenged him and he did nothing with it. Nice job coming back by Jason. Jason was born in Greenville, South Carolina. Went to high school out in the Pacific Northwest. I'm not sure how long he lived in this part of the world. We have some family and friends around. Wesley Wright's got a bunch coming tomorrow. And you talked about it earlier. This this area, Georgia, there's Gwinnett County, very fertile. Yeah. Baseball turning out a lot of players. Two and two. Well, Hayward, McCann, Francoeur, with the Braves. Three and two, Gaddis on deck. Mm. And Freeman hits the ball so hard. I remember, it was either last year or the year before the series against the Cubs. I think he lined out to Starlin Castro right behind second base like three or four times in one series. Yeah, that was last year. Was it last year? See where Castro's playing him and you, and you see why with the swings we've seen tonight. Well, the odd innings have gone just like this. Hamilton or Hamill rather gets the first uh, two hitters and then Freddie Freeman reaches. Just combined Andrelton, Simmons, and Jason Hamill with Hamilton. One and zero on Gaddis.
I would say don't throw the ball up in the zone. He didn't. And he gets him to pop to Valbuena to end the inning. A hit, no runs. We go to the sixth, two to one, Braves. in the city continues to be the executive club at Wrigley Field. Your guests will enjoy an all-inclusive top shelf bar and gourmet food in this high-end space with seventh inning stretch celebrities and former Cub players. For information contact the premier sales team 773-404-4200 or cubs.com slash sweets. Pitchers duel so far here at Turner Field. Julio Tehran face Baker, Hamill, and Bonifacio in the sixth. Lefties came in hitting 171 against him. Yeah, always. Good backdoor breaking ball. We've seen a really good change up to the left handed hitters. Good. Not only does he have really good stuff, but he appears to have a really good idea of how to use that stuff. Lined to uh, Hayward, who had to leap to make the catch, overran it a bit. John Baker hit the ball pretty well both times. Up this time, he really hits it sharply, but again, nothing to show for it. Two on Hamill. Has he been solid? Seventh start. Working on possibly his seventh straight quality start to begin his Cubs career. Swing and a miss, strike three. Eight for Tehran. That uh, ties his season high. His career high is 11.
Two base runners total in the ball game allowed by Tehran. One out walk to Kalish in the first leadoff home run to Holt. In the third normally the two outs you'd say hey, he shouldn't be bunting there trying to hit the ball in the gap or down the line for extra bases but. Fossil could turn a bunt single into a double with a stolen base. Bumper crop of good young pitchers coming into Major League Baseball the last couple seasons. Close. Got him at first. 12 in a row now retired by Tehran since the homer 2 1. Northside fan photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming broadcast. There is our AT&T fan photo tonight. Yeah, from the race to Wrigley. Chris Johnson with the go ahead two run single. Back in the third inning. Didn't get him to bite. Steady diet of breaking balls here. He hit a fastball through the hole between third and short to drive in those two runs in the third. Time he does get him to go after it. Slider after another, all well placed. The last three pitches getting progressively further off that outside corner. So one. I wonder what BJ stands for. I, do, I know. It's Boss Man Junior. Yeah. 
Real name is Melvin Emmanuel Upton. Dad is Boss Man, so he's Boss Man Jr. When he was eight, he was throwing 56 miles an hour. Seems pretty good. So pretty interesting in Cincinnati. Uh, Nolan Arenado. A chance to extend his hitting streak. 0 for 3 in the ninth inning. Down a run. Against Jonathan Broxton. He took a pretty close 3 2 pitch for ball four. So his. Rockies record 28 game hitting streak could be in major jeopardy. Even though he did help his mm -hmm. team's cause. Yeah. Give him credit. Yep. Not yeah, a lot of guys would be hacking there. Yeah. To keep that hitting streak alive. Full count, three and two. Swing and a miss, strike three. Again, two quick outs to get an inning started. See if Jason can finish this one off. Throws this fastball right by up, and they're trying to go away. Didn't get it out there, but got it by him. Strike to Simmons. Well, the uh, Rockies have tied it. Guess who scored the game tying run? Arenado on a Justin Morneau doubles 3 3. Maybe he will get another crack maybe, at it. Maybe the baseball gods will shine on Arenado for walking in, in his final. Plate appearance of regulation tonight. Simmons. Most likely. Simmons, a tough guy to finish off. Toughest guy in the National League to strike out. Just seven strikeouts coming into play tonight. 117 plate appearances. In the air to left, Kalish. Squeezes for the final out. Number 99 on the night for Hamill. And he's dealing.
the one Braves lead. Follow the Cubs with MLB.com at bat for your iPhone, iPad, Android, BlackBerry 10, or Windows Phone 8. Get score stats, highlights, live audio, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit Cubs.com for details. It's Ryan Kalish in the seventh. Side ball one. Fly ball to left. Routine for Justin Upton. Well, it's at this point of the game you. Have to say against the Braves, you don't want a trail going into the ninth against uh, Craig Kimbrell, who has not been bad. He's been pretty good this year, but a 2.19 ERA early on, JD, is about to double what we're used to seeing. Yeah, he had a little little stretch there. He scuffled a little bit, but he's been good lately. He has struck out half of the batters he has faced this year. His career strikeout rate's like what 44% yeah. Yeah. ridiculous. Rizzo lines right to Pena. Shallow right field. Just got to tell yourself that's a good swing. And down off the end of the, of the bat a little bit, but he's not positioned out there in shallow right. He's got himself a knock. This is going to be a very quick one, two, three for Tehran. Stretch time in Atlanta, 2 1 for the home team. And shuttle services are night and weekend games. The remote parking lot is at 3900 North Rockwell. For details go to Cubs.com. That was a six pitch inning. 
for Tehran. He leads off the bottom of the seventh, shows bunt. He takes ball one. Yeah, there it is again. That knee high fastball. And tough to get called tonight. Despite that, the pitchers have dominated. Cubs still have just one hit, the old home run in the third. Well, Ricky Renteria needed innings from his starter tonight. He got some tired arms out there in the bullpen, and he's gotten that from Jason Hamill. Zach Roscup is now up in the pen. One away. Bring up Pena. Caught a cleat there of his landing foot. You alluded to this uh, right off the top. Braves have played 33 games coming into tonight. Oh, golf tie in the air out into the right center, but it'll be Sherholtz. And 15 or nearly half of their games, they've scored two or fewer runs. They're right at two tonight. Yet they come in at 18 and 15, which speaks to their pitching. One and five on their a nine game homestand. They lost two out of three to St. Louis. Part of that was swept by the Giants, scored exactly one run in each of those three games against the Giants. And, and offensively, JD, I mean, I, I just a few innings ago gave you a laundry list of long term extensions. They're kind of locked in. Mm -hmm. the second base. Not so much. Uh, they still owe Dan Ugla a fair amount of money through next year. And we'll get down for a base hit for Hayward. Uh, but it looks like he's going to start losing some playing time at second. But you can't do that in a lot of spots in this lineup. So you're Freddy Gonzalez and their GM Frank Wren. You're just hoping that at some point they. Start performing to their potential, I guess. Yeah, you know, Brian McCann, obviously, a big part of it, and he's missing, and that's uh, clearly one of the reasons. I mean, last year, the Braves finished fourth in the league and run scored, but it's a very similar approach. They hit a lot of home runs, they didn't draw a lot of walks, they don't steal a ton of bases. It's a you know, home run reliant team. Uh, when they're not hitting the ball out of the ballpark, it's tough for them to generate runs. Uh, so, you know, how do you fix that? I guess, I guess. You know, I don't know the nature of all their deals, but maybe you know some of those assets are tradable. You know, you just move guys to get a different style of player in here. They could use Martin Prado. <laughs> Still think they'd rather have this guy. I mean. To catch him at the wrong time, you'd think, oh my goodness, what a lineup, right? We've seen Gaddis good, and Freeman's one of the tougher outs in the league. Again, Hayward, I'm not sure exactly what they have there offensively. A couple years ago, it looked like he was trending upward. On Justin Upton. BJ Upton two years ago for Tampa Bay hit 28 home runs last year, nine for Atlanta. That's the one, BJ Upton. It's been really hard to figure out. 
great stats way off what they were in Tampa Bay. Justin, he's only 26. Hey, your uh, pattern has remained in the odd innings, two outs, and then the third guy reaches. In the first, third, and fifth, it was Freeman. Here in the seventh, it's Hayward. The second, fourth, and sixth innings have been all three up, three down for Hamill. All near the bottom of the order. Hayward has stolen five bases this year. He's been caught once. By Oltz. Rizzo able to keep his foot on the bag to end the inning. We'll go to the eight. Two one Braves. Nice play, play to yep. get up to him. Yep. Charging that ball and playing a little short hop on the backhand side. A lot of things could have gone wrong there, but well played. Well, for the first time tonight, Julio Tehran did not record a strikeout in an inning in the seventh. Is that an indication that he's losing his stuff a little bit? Probably not. But when you've had one hit, you look for something, something to pin your hopes on. Maybe he's losing it. Back out here for the eighth. Sitting at 92 pitches. He's made sure Holtz takes ball one. Wow. Not sure where that one was, maybe inside. Slider in and then the change up away. Comes a two seam fastball. Gets the desired result. Tapper right back to the mound. We've had the conversation a lot this year, kind of the chicken and the egg thing. Is it uh, the pitching is really good, or the Cubs are just scuffling? Um, 
tonight, clearly, Tehran has been really, really good. Ten or so ago, I brought up the point about the, the good young pitchers in the game. This kid's 23. You think about Matt Harvey, Jose Fernandez, Sonny Gray. Really talented young pitchers. I guess Steven Strasburg is like an old guy now compared to this, this group. One strike pitch outside. And that's something the Cubs don't have right now. They don't have that top of the rotation young guy knocking on the door. They do have a lot of assets. They've got some really talented position players down in the minor leagues that might help you get that guy. Yeah, the assumption is that all the position player prospects will fill spots on the big league roster at some point and that may happen but. Maybe that. Some of those guys will be turned into other assets. At some point. Yeah there's you know there's a harshness to it when you refer to players as assets and inventory but that's the reality of the situation. And that's why position depth. At one spot is really good. <laughs> and then if you identify, okay, this is our guy at this spot, then the next in line possibly could be a trade chip or vice versa. Maybe the, the incumbent is the guy you move. Mm -hmm. As Valbuena strikes out. So much for that losing stuff theory. Nine now for Tehran. That was his 100th pitch. Yeah, sometimes he's fooled Cub hitters. Other times he just beat him. In this instance, he just beats Luis with a fastball. They'll tie at 93. Well, their one hit was a home run by this guy to lead off the third inning. Homer now three consecutive ball games. Tried to overthrow a slider. Gaddis wanted to throw a fastball away. Tehran didn't trust it. And they both jumped on the fastball for the home run in the third. Tehran a little wary of throwing it in there, but now he's. Two balls, no strikes. Exactly where we were in the third, three and zero. Oh, he took a fastball and then hit the next one into the seats. I let him again. I'd let him swing right here. Two out walk. Just a, that's this is the guy that hit the big home run off of me, and I want no part of him. That pitch sequence by Tehran. Baker's 0 for 2 tonight, but he's had good swings. Last time up, lined out to right field. The time before, the pretty deep drive to right field. Visit from the pitching coach Roger McDowell and will be Tehran against Baker. Has to be some temptation to to pinch run for uh, old tier with either Coglin or Lake. Maybe try to steal a base or give yourself a better chance of scoring on an extra base hit. Down to your final four outs and you talked about Kimbrell being out there in that bullpen. So you know the, the likelihood that you're going to string some hits together. Do some damage against him. Pretty small, so this might be a good time to. I'm sure they've talked about it. Should we run for him? Try to steal a bag? Well, 
ball to Pena. He'll flip to Simmons, and that's it. Might be it for Tehran. Eight innings of one run, one hit ball. Starters lived up to the uh, billing tonight. Tehran, eight innings, one hit, one run. Hamill, seven innings, seven hits, two runs. And when you have Craig Kimbrell in your bullpen, if you're Freddie Gonzalez, you don't need to push your starter. And here's hard throwing lefty Zach Rosscup. Try to keep the Braves at two. And got Freddie Freeman, a dangerous left handed hitter, to get things started here in the bottom half of the eighth. Fastball slider primarily from Roscup. Been in three games so far with the Cubs, including last night. Came in and got a big out in the ball game last night while it was still fairly tight. And a strike on Freeman. 2 0 with an ERA of three down at Iowa this year for Zach in seven appearances. Zone. He'll beat Freeman to the bag. There's been a tendency on Anthony's part to wait and flip to the pitcher, but he saw Ross Cup might not beat Freeman. Yeah, two things you have to be, don't assume the pitcher's going to get there and, and charge that ground ball and give yourself a little bit of a head start. You know, generally, if you can take it on your own, it's better. Not that the flip to the pitcher is a hard play, but. Why throw it if you don't have to? Kimbrell under the watchful eye of bullpen coach Omar Sharif. <laughs> Well, it's Eddie Perez. Yeah. He just looks like Omar Sharif. Hey. 
One and two. Talking to uh, Ricky Renteria before the ball game today. He really likes Roscoe. Likes his makeup. Likes his stuff. Trust us, that's the manager behind that camera. 2 2 to Gaddis. Bounced foul. Got away with a little one there. A little high slider, not where he wanted to put it. Swing and a miss. Two down. Yeah, come right back with the same pitch. That time he was able to get on top of it, make the adjustment. A lot of times that's the case after throwing it throw bad, call it again. Have to make the adjustment, make the quality pitch, kind of like in golf, and hit that wayward shot. Drop that second ball. That second guy's always better. Well, little did we know. When it happened, the Johnson two run single would be the difference. At least here in, into the bottom of the eighth. That happened back in the third inning. 2 and 0. Oh. Johnson, uh, a little mini snappage. Did you see the body language there after that swing? Yeah, he was he, screaming at himself. Yeah, and he, he 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 can snap with the best of them. This was the uh, the first swing and miss. Got a little watch. greedy there on 2 0, went after a high fastball. Blooped into center. Third hit of the night. Now he smiles. Yeah, well, that's an attitude adjustment. A little mood enhancer there when you get a knock. That one with a rolled up newspaper, but his third hit of the night will be for Ross Cup. BJ Upton coming up. Chris Coglin will come in for Kalish as part of a double switch as well here in the eighth. Come in to pitch. 
Chris Coughlin now playing left. So Kalish goes to center from left. Bonifacio goes from center to second. Malbuena goes from second to third. And Mike Olt loses in the musical chairs. Rondon has not been out there in a while. So if he could get the job done here. The Cubs can find a way to score in the top half. Would likely stay in the ball game. Worked three days in a row, May 2nd, 3rd, and 4th in the Cardinals series. Well, the first two games and gave it up that final outing. And that's why the double switch. Coglin will be the leadoff hitter in the ninth against Kimbrell. So Johnson at first, and the pitch to BJ up, then he swings and misses. Fastball slider and a cut fastball from Rondon. We've seen him routinely 95 to 97 miles an hour with that heater. Goes Johnson, pitches a strike, throw is late. Big jump there by Johnson. Who's not a, a base dealer. That's his first. Got a very modest lead. But he got a good jump. A high leg kick from Rondon allows Johnson to get into scoring position. Time 0 and 2 on the hitter. Swing and a miss, strike three, and we will go to the ninth. It's still two to one, Atlanta. And pretty much lights out. One hit for the Cubs, a home run by Mike Olt, but that's been it all night. Eight innings for Tehran. And if you watch this montage of strikeouts, note the variation of pitches. There's the change up there. You saw a bunch of fastballs. Good slider there to get Olt. He's got a nice assortment of pitches, and he really knows how to use them. Impressive stuff from Tehran. Now uh, the Cubs have to get it done in the ninth against Craig Kimbrell, one of the best in the business. Nine saves and ten tries this year, and we talked about that otherworldly strikeout rate. Twelve and a third innings worked. He has struck out 26. 
mid April. Battled some uh, shoulder soreness. But, uh, picked up his ninth save on uh, Tuesday as the uh, Braves snapped a seven game losing streak. Back out there tonight facing Chris Coglin. And you might see early swings against Kimbrell because he strikes out so many. Well, and you pretty much know he's going to come with a high percentage of fastball, so guys will go up there ready to hit the fastball. And they see it in the zone where they think they can do something with it. Yeah, you might as well take a whack at it. Breaker too. Not trying to be too fine right there, right in the center square, right in the uh, Whoopi Goldberg square there. Paul in for a previous generation. One hit a home run. And that was way back in the third inning. Pitch is not rising. It looks like it rises. Bit of an optical illusion. It just stays on playing. It does. Not a late life. Arm out to the side like a gunslinger, like he's ready to draw his pistol. And a base hit. Only the second of the night for the Cubs, but a leadoff single for Coughlin. Good job. That elevated fastball is a chase pitch. You saw Coughlin start, but he was able to check his swing, and then he puts a nice swing on the slider. Well, Bonifacio has some options here. Good bunter. Rule of thumb is you don't play for the tie on the road. But if Bonifacio were to butt, you could understand. Amy, you're up against Kimbrell, one of the toughest in the business. If you're thinking maybe let's just, if we can find a way to score and extend the ball game, yeah. get Kimbrell out of there. Not be able to get too greedy in this spot. Talk it over. Turn twenty six later this month. Kimbrel from Huntsville, Alabama. There's a pitch by Kimbrell and Bonifacio is late. Just got a piece of it into the glove of Gaddis. Against a guy like Kimbrell, you almost have to take a two strike approach from the outset. Shorten that swing. 
playing a little pepper with the center fielder. I, mean, I don't know if this is the count to do it. But I think at some point you try to run with Coughlin here. Maybe after the Bonifacio at bat see how this plays out. Dipped below 300. The downside of running, of course, if you get caught, it might not get Rizzo to the plate. 2 2. We take, it's full. A running count. And can they trust? Bonifacio, who should be able to get a bat on the ball to make contact against his fireball. All right, that's telling you. You've got a guy who has struck out 50% of the batters he has faced. That's, that's the fear. There he goes. Ground ball that will stay out of the double play. Simmons gets Bonifacio. You do have a time run, though, in scoring position with one out. A good job by Bonifacio there battling through that at bat. Well, ultimately you get the same result as if you'd gotten down a successful sacrifice bunt. Coglin moving the second baseman Pena covering the bag because they didn't figure that Bonifacio would pull Kimbrell. Couple of cracks at it here. Slider low on Kalish. The 1 0 pitch. There's a base hit. Coglin will be sent by Gary Jones. It's booted out there by Justin Upton. And Kalish on his way to second. He's saved. Well, I thought Upton might have a play on Coglin, but he simply booted it, and we're tied at two. Boy, great work by the Cubs here in the ninth. It gets one of the best in the business. Inside out swing by Kalish. And I think this ball's got some funky spin on it, too. Upton, not the defensive player that his brother is out there in the Braves outfield. And good heads up base running by Kalish, too. You know, sometimes guys get caught watching the play, celebrating the big knock, but not Kalish. He hustles, gets himself into scoring position for Rizzo. RBI single for Kalish, an error on Upton, allowing him to get to second. One strike on Rizzo. Bullpens are quiet. Rondon got the final out of the eighth. Kimbrell trying to get out of this ninth with only one run as that ball's bounced to Freeman, and he will beat Rizzo. Kalish now at third, two outs. Jason Hamill off the hook. Julio Teran with a big hang with him. Can Castro come up with a big hit? Two and nothing. Oh. 
The check swing, 3 0. Cubs have gotten it done against Craig Kimbrell here in the ninth. Ambush him right here. Ball four. The swing out. McDowell out. The Sherholtz with runners at first and third. Good night for Nate. Last night, not so much tonight. Not a good night for any hitter, pretty much tonight. Two strikeouts and a ground ball back to the mound off of Tehran. Ball over. Strike one. Wesley right now up in the Cubs pen. Rondon is in the seventh spot in the batting order. Wide of third, Joey Votto. And a home run in the ninth. And the Reds 4 3 win over the Rockies. It was a 3 0 pitch from a left hander, Boone Logan, to win it. 0 oh 2 on Sherholtz. Otto doesn't swing 3 0 very often, does he? Yeah, I don't know if if, uh, if that's my, if the Rondon's spot in the batting order were to come up, the Cubs would have had to score one more run and have the lead. So I don't know that they would actually hit for Rondon. Maybe they would, but. Right, try to finish it. My guess is that's mostly a decoy. Round ball to second. This will end the inning as Pena will get it to Freeman in time, but the Cubs tie it up. And it's 2 2 to the bottom of the ninth. Andrelton Simmons will start it. And 
And then the pinch hitter looks like Ryan Domit is on deck. Outside ball one. Through on that fastball, two and zero. Oh. Second blown save of the year for Craig Kimbrell. He was 50 out of 54 last year. Rondon's 2 Whoa. 1. Almost hit him 3 and 1. I don't know how it didn't. Lost that slider. Fortunately for everybody involved, didn't hit Simmons. He probably would have been willing to take one for the team there. And just got to throw him a good fastball, keep it down, out over the outer third. There you go. Foul ball. Uh, you Darvish uh, had a perfect game. Broken up on an error. Top of the seventh. Texas leading Boston 8 nothing. So still has a no hitter intact. Swing and a miss. He comes back to get Andrelton Simmons. Who doesn't strike out that much? And only the eighth time all year. Don't no beat him with a fastball up out of his own. Switch hitting Ryan Doman. Yeah, just hitting a buck seventy six, but switch hitter with power, better from this side. He's been their most frequently used pinch hitter. Fifteen at bats in the pinch. He's got three hits. Off the bench. Not bad for his career, own two. Surprised if some young fans walk up to him and say, Hey, Evan, can you give me an autograph? Mm -hmm. Pirates tried him as their primary catcher and he just struggled behind the plate. You know, he's the kind of player you, you kind of pine for a switch hitting catcher with power. But some just defensive shortcomings turned him into a, a part time player. Play the corner outfield spots, first base. Basically, is their third catcher behind Gaddis and Gerald Laird. Full three and two. Pena on deck. Dolman reaches. 
probably see Jordan Schaefer run for him. Yeah, he's just going to stay away from the power here. I don't want to make a mistake and let him end this ball game with one swing. Just get the ball right out where John Baker's sitting. Nolan Arenado's uh, 28 game hitting streak did end tonight as he went 0 for 3 with a walk. 3 2. Fouled off. Swing and a miss, strike three. Rondon has faced three and has struck out all of them. A lengthy at bat by Dome at the battle ultimately won on that 94 mile an hour fastball. These brave hitters will not be able to complain that they weren't challenged by Rondon. He's not trying to trick them. Switch hitter, it's Pena. Hughes beat Justin Verlander tonight. Minnesota at Detroit. 2 1 Twins, the final. Pirates did beat St. Louis 6 4. <laughs> I think he was trying to end the ball game. Uh huh. Tee it high and let it fly. Going on there, try to catch up to that Rondon fastball. And we'll head to the 10th. It's a 2 2 tie in Atlanta.
beef jerky all season long. Jack Link's beef jerky. Feed your wild side. Tender Alex Wood in the ball game now for the Braves. Two and five. He's pitched much better than that. ERA at three. He too has outstanding strikeout numbers. How did we get to this point? Well, how about Mike Gold going deep for the third game in a row? Did you hear it? Crack of the bat, deep fly. The only hit that Julio Turan allowed tonight in his eight innings of work landed in the seats. Jason Hamill had a fastball drift out over the middle of the plate a little bit to Chris Johnson. He drove in two with that base hit. And the Cubs rally that gets one of the best in the business. Ryan Kalish with the RBI single to tie the ball game in the ninth. Chris Coughlin had single to get things started. Entertaining ball game, well pitched, well played, and on we go to the tenth. How about the fact that Kimbrell didn't strike out anybody? In that ninth inning. Good, 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 good work. Good, good approaches by the Cub hitters. Had the right guys. They made it happen. So Wood with a temporary hiatus from the rotation to the bullpen. We're talking about talented young pitchers earlier. Here's another one. He's 6'4, 215, 23 years of age. Fastball curve and a change and kind of funky with that delivery. It's a high strike there. Two and one on Valbuena. Pitch. Foul back to two. -two. Full count, Junior Lake. And he'll hit for Rondon. Um, he's on deck. Twenty seven one forty five tonight in the ballpark. We came in anticipating a low run game. That's exactly what we've gotten. Yeah. Look out folks. 18 minute rain delay before the first pitch. Hit to start the tenth. A little wounded animal out there. <laughs> yeah. Just kind of deadened off the bat. There's been three or four balls hit to right field tonight that I thought when they first left the bat that they were hit pretty well. And Hayward had a couple of them, but obviously weren't hit very well, including that one. Now Junior Lake up there in a Bunting situation. We've seen Junior in the past. He's better when he tries to bunt for a hit than when he just turns around and tries to sacrifice. So even though the situation may call for a bunt, Ricky Renteria may think, well, I can ask a guy to do something I'm not sure he's going to be able to execute. Swings away. Uh, give, him, give him at least one swing. And, you know, you've got John Baker on deck, a left handed hitter. And Coglin behind him, a left handed hitter. You got Barney and Castillo on your bench. So 
So you may feel like your best chance is Lenny Jr. swing the bat. Pick toss to first. One and two. And a swing and a miss, strike three. Junior with that big swing and that, that's kind of the, the challenge for him. He's shown an, an unwillingness to cut down on a swing with two strikes. Now Baker. With Valbuena still at first one out. The pitch. It's a strike. Ironic after all the injuries to the Braves pitching staff that they have enough starting depth to justify moving Wood to the bullpen, giving Freddie Gonzalez a second left handed option out there. And they've played so many low run tight games. Obviously, they, they see the value in having that second lefty. The former Cub, Doug Desenzo. Positioning their outfielders. He's also the third base coach. Oh, two on the way. Baker stays alive. Three hits for Neil Walker in the, that Pirate win over the Cardinals, six to four. A three run homer in the seventh inning. Put them uh, on top for good. Pirates have won three in a row now. Brewers had lost two in a row coming into play tonight. They had won just four of their last ten, so they're cooling off a little bit. Everybody in the division kind of limping around around 500 in the last ten days or so. Brewers are down late, 5 2 to the Yanks. Bottom of the eighth. Well, there's another good young pitcher, Tanaka. Fans are getting greedy. Pulling Mike Winters over that one. BJ Upton for the out. Tanaka, if he wins tonight, will go to 5 and 0. 4 and 0 with a 257. 
This guy just never loses, wasn't he? 24 0 last yeah, year. Yeah, and I think his streak of uh, starts without a loss, it's like in the 40s, I think. <laughs> That's crazy. Orioles have won four in a row. Four three, they beat the Astros to get the O's to five over the break-even mark. Manny Machado with his first homer of the season. It's coming back from knee surgery in the offseason. It's the first month. Baltimore comes to town this year, correct? Correct. Oh. I want to see that kid play. I haven't seen him play. Now, Blaine started the inning with a single, but he's still at first with two gone. And an 0-2 count to Coglin. Fastball to end the inning. We'll go to the bottom of the tenth, 2-2. Two -two. the left. Tenth. Wesley's well, been on a nice roll of late. Eleven consecutive scoreless outings. He's been in 13 games overall. Very good numbers. 13 strikeouts, just two walks in 11 and a third innings. Wait a minute, son. Wrong team. It's a defensive chop that he's working on. Top of the order Hayward, Justin Upton, Freddie Freeman. Those two walks on Wesley's ledger came in his very first outing. He hasn't walked anybody since. The third of an inning last night. Five pitches registered a punch out. Oh. 
final out of the game, in fact. Which a game that would never the, end. Yeah, he made him the MVP. He's tightened up that slider. Throws both curveball and a slider. Go away, away, away with a breaking ball and sneak a fastball in on the hands of a left handed hitter. He's got to throw some strikes to Hayward. He'll take his walks, and he's keenly aware of how important that would be in this spot, leading off here in the bottom of the 10th. So Hayward stands pretty far off the plate. Yeah, and sometimes I can create a problem for a pitcher just because it's so unusual. You, know, you, you get used to looking in a home plate and kind of seeing the scene looks relatively the same with most hitters, but when you get a guy that's either right on top of the plate or well off the plate, it can create, create some problems for you. Normally you try to crowd these guys. Well, they did there. It's three and two. Those guys that are long and strong like Hayward that stand off the plate will dive to cover the outside part of the plate. They like to go out and extend their arms. Ball four. Well, that's not the way that was designed in the huddle. The lead off walk in the bottom of the 10th. Meanwhile, you Darvish threw eight. No hitting the Red Sox. Rangers batting in the bottom of the eighth. It's eight nothing Texas. 113 pitches through eight. We'll keep you posted. Has uh, 11 strikeouts, two walks. Hayward is going to be safe. They had him picked off, but he just kept on running. Castro was hoping that he had overslid the bag. He did not. And Ricky Renteria looking back in to see if. He wants to challenge this, and this is just here we're taking off on first move, realizing that there was a good chance he would have to steal the space on the combination of the throw from right to Rizzo to Castro, and he does come off that bag momentarily. Now they'll walk Upton. Ball three. Pitch to Freeman with two on and nobody out. So, JD, you get to this part of the lineup. This is a situation, even if you're pretty much against bunting, that you'd say, well, this would be a good spot for a bunt. But you're not going to ask Justin Upton to do it. You're not going to ask Freddie Freeman to do it. You're not going to ask Evan Gaddis to do it. Right, on right, deck. Right, so. Yeah, you're not going to give up any outs, and you're not going to take the bat out of their hands. So for that reason, Ricky doesn't have to worry about positioning his players for some sort of wheel play. Just position them to to get Freeman, and ideally here get two, but you got to get one. Give yourself a chance. Winning run now second. The pitch to Freeman. Through to center. They're going to send Hayward. Here's the throw to the plate by Kalish. It's way late. And the Braves win it in 10. 
A tough loss for the Cubs after a big win last night. And Jason Hamill really pitched well. The bullpen stood tall until the last here. The leadoff walk really came back to bite Wesley Wright. Good execution by the Braves. Stolen base. And then Freddie Freeman, as we've seen do, him do so often, just a, another line drive off the bat of Freeman, this time delivering the game winner. Yeah, did he put on a clinic on... Hitting the ball back through the box tonight. Yeah, he's one of those guys near the top of the leaderboard since he came into the league in terms of line drive percentage. He just makes a lot of solid contact. Doesn't matter if the pitcher is right handed, left handed, a power guy, finesse guy. Freeman just a very good major league hitter. So a tough one run extra inning loss for the Cubs tonight. And for J.D. and our entire crew here in Atlanta, Len Casper wrapping up our broadcast. The final and 10, Braves 3, Cubs 2. Monday, 6.30 pregame, St. Louis will be there. Cubs and Cardinals here on CSN. Stay tuned, Blue Cross Blue Shield Cubs postgame live is next.